So a good number of you felt the need to correct me on classifying the majority of you as 13-year-old Caucasian males. Yes, some of you said you were not in fact 13, or not in fact Caucasian, or not in fact male. So allow me to abridge my generalization from yesterday's episode. The majority of internet goers are 13-year-old Caucasian males who systematically lie about their age, race, and gender. Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's October 2, the 275th day of 2011, which means that yesterday I didn't quite get finished with my multi-step process of how to make a video blog. So we'll pick up where we left off. Steps 1 through 3 were sort of preliminary steps, so now we'll get to the actual meat of video blogging. Mmm, meat. So here we go. Step 4, stress over making a first episode. Nothing is more important than your first episode, because it's your opening statement, your appetizer, your thesis. With this video, you're telling your audience what to expect from subsequent videos, and whether it's worth it or not to stick around. However, and here's the tricky part, it has to be representative of the whole. You can't start your series off with you getting shot in the crotch with a paintball gun. Even though that is pretty funny, it's not very relevant. Unless, of course, the theme of your show is you getting hit in the crotch with various projectiles. Also, don't take that video blog idea. I may want to use it in the future. Step 4A. Capture the right mood. Something as seemingly unimportant as your fashion sense can dictate the mood of your show. Frame your shots carefully. Simple framing can land your show anywhere on the gradient of creepiness to friendliness. Hi guys, welcome to Griff's Corner. I killed a bug today and cried for ten whole minutes. Hey Honey Punch McNuggets, welcome to Griff's Bed. Come join me. Hi guys, welcome to It's the Program. Let's talk about some crap. Step 4B. Put some thought into the ambient aspects of your show. For example, put just as much thought into what happens between the shots of you talking as you do into the shots of you talking themselves. I, for one, flash a picture of large breasts for a millionth of a second between each one of my shots. Ooh, those are nice ones. Also, put some serious thought into your background, because after all, it's what the viewers are going to look at when they're tired of your face. I chose a poster of a person, because if my viewers are tired of staring at me and tired of staring at the guy in the poster in the background, they can further remove themselves from the video's content and stare into the background of the background poster. Step 4C. Pick a topic of discussion. The topic you choose to blather on about for three to four excruciatingly long minutes is the quote-unquote focal point of the video. Obviously, the real focal point is how many times you screw up or whatever recycled obvious joke you're choosing to wave around, but having a topic of discussion is a great way to pretend. And if you ever run out of topics to discuss, you can always discuss video blogging itself, or discuss discussing video blogging itself itself. It's super easy, and you'll get a bunch of points for being all meta. Step 4D. When editing, include an occasional error. It's nice for viewers to see the human side of the video blogger every once in a while. To see the human side... I just said that. To see the flaws... To see the flaws in the person they so highly revere. And Step 4E. Post your first video to a subscription-enabled forum like YouTube. If people are suckered into seeing your video thumbnails every day because they subscribed, then the chances of them actually watching your video go up. Video blogging is all about suckering people in. Never forget that. Man, I guess we're looking at a three-parter here. So until tomorrow, I'm Griff, and I'm still talking.